Hey everyone, thanks for coming back for another figure opening video today. Today we're going to be opening up the new Hatsune Miku title figure that came out last month. Again, this is another figure I've wanted to open for a little while but I hadn't had the time. Now I've got a little bit of time on Sunday, why not? Let's open her up. But of course, first let's take a look at the box and see what we've got. So, as you can see, Miku is on the front smiling with a hand waving out. This looks pretty damn cute. Um, we also have our Taito logo up here and our Jaya Prize logo. Um, also Hatsune Miku up the top right over here. Down here we have Hatsune Miku Taito Seifuku figure, volume 2. Seifuku here is just uniform in English, so it should be pretty simple for us to kind of get the meaning of this figure. <laughs> and then of course down here we have the game Taito Station. Um, again, you can only win this in Taito Stations in Japan. This is not something you can win from a Sega arcade or a Namco arcade, only Taito, which of course makes sense. But anyway, so here's one side, the front. Moving to the side, we have Miku from the back and we have Miku again from the front. Um, this is pretty cute, nice use of space there. And on the other side, you can see Miku is taking up the whole front of the box here. She's even overlapping the sides over here, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, it's all the same information as the other side. And then on this side, we have an illustration. Uh, this illustration is by Mago. Mago's done some of the Hatsune Miku figures that we've already collected before. Again, great artists, definitely check out their Twitter and definitely check out their art, because there's a lot of good stuff. And then down here, we also have our warning information. Again, the surprise only. Oh, and there you go, illustration by Mago down here. And then moving to the top, we have just game title station, X Hatsune Miku. And then on the bottom we have the exact same stuff. So, let's not waste any time and get this open. Okay, and in with our knife. So yeah, three pieces of tape as you would expect. Um, and yeah, very interestingly, the artist for this year's Taito Station Miku figure was the same artist that did the figure last year. Um, maybe you saw in the Anime Figure Showcase, I quickly, very briefly reviewed the Volume 1 figure. Um, because I hadn't started this channel at that point. <laughs> um, but it's the same illustrator, so it's really cool that they kept the same person to go through with this year. Um, but anyway, right, let's get this open and see what we've got. Okay, so it is a lot of bubble wrap. Um, interesting packaging style, nothing there. Let's get rid of that. Um, ooh, okay, here is our Miku. Um, missing her hair, I suppose. Uh, there is a stand, that's brilliant, and uh, there are two pieces of hair here, um, and I believe that's it. So as you can see, we've got the figure, we have the stand, and we have the two pieces of hair. So only four pieces for this figure this time. Um, it's a shame it's not in a plastic case, but bubble wrapping is just as protective, so I don't mind this either. But anyway, let's get these unpacked and start reviewing. Okay, so our stand, and here is our stand. And as you can see, like last year's figure, this is extremely thin. I think this is great because it goes very nicely under other figures that could be sitting on top, and it doesn't take up tons of space, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, you can also see that it is completely see-through, and it just has one stand. Again, this is very reminiscent of last year, where the figure was standing on one leg with a leg kicking out, um, and I believe this is the same for this year. So it's nice at keeping a common theme. Um, interestingly, this time there is a point sticking out and there's also a hole going in. So it's going to give double support for the figure. And you can also see some kind of imprint from her shoe. So that's pretty cool too. Um, on the back, there is nothing at all. It's just one big flat surface. Although you can see that there's a little bit of space here. And then over here, I don't know if you can see, so I'll put my hand in the way. Illustration by Mago. Again, great artists. Please, please go check them out. Uh, they have, you have the Krypton Future Media Inc., the Pia Pro, Title Corporation, 1978. Wow, that must have been Space Invaders release day. <laughs> and then everything else, Title Corp, all rights of in that China. And it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, this is a lovely, lovely stand. And it's just beautifully simple. So, stand. And of course, our Miku figure herself. And as you can see, this figure is absolutely adorable, but she is missing something pretty damn key. 
which is of course her hair. <laughs> With these little sticky outy points she looks like some kind of alien. These are her antennas. Um, interesting. <laughs> so of course we have to put in the hair pieces. Now this time's different because usually the hair pieces will have something sticking out going into the head, but they've gone the opposite direction with this one. So it's nice to see a little bit of difference this time. So again, they have these different kind of connecting blocks. This one is like in a T-Tetris block. And then this one on this side is just a complete mess. I can't work out what that is. So let me get the hair in very, very quickly. One second. And here we go. Here is our Miku with her hair in. Um, I'll be really honest with you all, this was really difficult to put in. Um, I don't know if you can see, but my thumb's extremely red from trying to push it in. You can probably see a few marks there, um, maybe a little bit on this side. Uh, it was not comfortable, I'll be really honest. But now it's in, hopefully it is not going to come out anytime soon. Um, well, that would be dangerous. <laughs> so, let's not waste time and let's get into reviewing this figure. So. Starting off with her face, as you can see, Miku is looking off at the side. She has these beautiful green kind of turquoisey eyes, and they are massive. They take up a massive amount of this figure's face. Compared to last year's figure, that only had one eye open and one eye winking. Uh, oh, even that's kind of cute. <laughs> but this year, we have both eyes wide open, so that's a lovely, lovely addition to this year. Um, you can see that her nose sticks out ever so slightly, and her mouth is massive. <laughs> it's extremely wide, massively open. Um, and inside you can also see she's got these little teeth designed at the top. She's also got her hair coming down in two splits at each side um, with a few little strands separated, which is nice and cool. It's a little bit on the top there. Um, and she also has this massive piece of hair that comes down in the middle. And again, this is very, very common with Miku. She always has her hair like this. Um, but what I like is there's a kind of gradient effect going on with her hair. As you can see, it's kind of like a darker blue here, but then it kind of fades into this turquoisey colour at the top. So it gives a lot of detail and a lot more depth to the figure. So yeah, that's her face. And moving into her hair in a bit more detail, as I mentioned, she has these two massive, massive strands of hair that come down into two separate halves. Um, this one goes all the way down and it has a very smooth part inside here with these two little strands coming off. And again, these are very, very malleable, which is kind of cool if you want to reposition. Uh, I don't recommend doing that. And then on the other side, it is exactly the same. Um, now, sometimes it doesn't look great when it has this full plastic effect here, but actually it kind of has its own uniqueness about it. This is a little qualm I had with last year's figure, but I think actually it kind of looks quite nice. <laughs> it gives a more cartoony effect to the figure itself. Um, you can also see that her hair has these little squares at the top, um, again, same with most of our figures, and exact same squares as last year's figure, and these nicely hide the tiny little gaps that you can see where the hair has not fully gone in. Uh, maybe you can see it best here. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can also see that our Miku is wearing a headset, she has headphones on each side, and she also has a little microphone that comes down here. Um, it's interesting because the microphone also has a little bit of blue on it too, just to show you that it's there, because it's quite a small detail, it's not something that really stands out at all. Um, but the headphones also go all the way down with this wire coming here, there's a little clip here so they could probably talk to people, and then this goes all the way down to this pack at the back, which probably has some kind of battery or some kind of computer in there, I have no idea. Um, but that's a little cool little bag there too, um, it's got a tiny title kind of logo at the bottom there. Wow, it's dinky! And a few bits of paper sticking out, so that's cool. But anyway, that is her face. Absolutely wonderful face here. Now, moving down the body, you can see that her uniform is a complete different colour to last year's version. Last year was a red and black theme, this year is a blue and red theme, and very heavy on the blue, which is pretty cool. You can see that she's wearing this blue shirt with some gold buttons going down the middle, keeping her shirt closed. Um, the top half has this kind of red pattern at the top, again with the little title Space Invader logo there, and probably something hidden under here. I'm guessing the logo says Miku? Oh no, it says Hatsune, there you go. <laughs> but again, that's pretty funky, even tiny details like that that are hidden behind stuff exist. Um, so yeah, that's cool, I like that. 
Um, she also has these short sleeves on her arms, and again, these got these wonderful little ruffles on her sleeves where they've been rolled up slightly. Um, again, it is summertime here in Japan, so it's bloody hot. <laughs> Um, and this has two different layers to it. It has the blue and the red under sleeve here. Um, also on her sleeve, I don't think you can really see because the hair is in the way, but there is again another Taito Space Invader there, which is probably the same over here. There you go. Um, but yeah, this uniform's wonderful. Um, and you can even see her bust kind of sticks out slightly on this uniform. So, I mean, that's pretty nicely detailed, actually. But yeah, there you go. That's her top. Um, on the back of her shirt, she also has this Taito logo there, or the, sorry, Space Invader, and a sign or a stamp saying Staff. Um, I mean, it's kind of obvious that she is Staff, but uh, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> so, that's her t-shirt. Looking at her arms, she has one arm sticking out like this with some kind of hyper extension to her arm. Actually, looking at it at this angle, that is creepy as hell. My arm does not do that. <laughs> um, but she's got one hand sticking out, kind of beckoning to people. Um, again, it's just a Miku kind of thing, I feel. Or just anime thing. <laughs> um, and then on the other side, she has these tiny little nails. And on the other arm, you can see that this is folded nicely, so it's not kind of overly bent. Um, her hands are kind of gripping up like this because Maybe you've noticed it, but she's holding a massive Space Invader cushion. This really does stand out quite a bit, and I was trying my best not to kind of mention it straight away. Um, but, I mean, how could you not? It's huge. Now, last year, our Miku had a Space Invader inside of a glass ball. Um, again, at the end of this video, we'll put a little comparison with them both together. But this year, she's holding this Taito cushion. Um, and I'm squeezing it to see if it is a cushion. It's not. It's actually a kind of hollow piece of plastic. Maybe you can hear that tinging. Um, but this is a lovely purple and black colour. There is a tiny little bit of white on this eye here. Uh, I'm not too sure why. I was trying to scratch that off. Maybe it's just a misprint. Um, but this is wonderful. And then on the back here, you can see it even says Space Invaders. So Taito are really, really trying to hold on to that victory from 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> But yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this a lot. Now, moving down her body, she's wearing this mini, 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 mini skirt, um, which is extremely mini. <laughs> and again, this is the same colour as her shirt. She also has another little title Space Invader there on this pocket. Um, and then also another pocket here. And again, I maybe didn't talk too much about it up here, but this gold trimming that goes all the way around is beautiful. Such a wonderful, wonderful little pattern there. Um, she's also got one there on her butt, which is kind of cool. Um, but then also, something I like a lot about this are these little folds going on in her dress. Like, it should actually be folding like that. Um, I guess if she's walking or if she's skipping, it's going to move. So this adds so much more detail. Such a beautiful addition. Um, but yeah, that's her skirt. And moving down her legs, you can see that she's wearing these three-quarter length trousers. Um, they've been folded up slightly here. Um, so you can actually see, again, another Space Invader logo there, and there's also one inside, if you look very, very carefully over here. Um, again, this is pretty cool. Uh, there's not too much to talk about here, it's just a shiny black plastic. Um, she has one leg up kicking, and then one leg sticking straight down. And again, this is where our figure is going to go into the stand, which we'll do in a second. But one thing I like a lot about this figure are the shoes. And you can see that she has this 01 at the front of her shoes. Um, because on her arm, we can't actually see the 01 tattoo. Um, again, in Japan, tattoos are a big taboo, so why does she have one? <laughs> um, but yes, there's the 01 there. And the shoes themselves, if the camera would focus... Come on, camera. There we go. No, no. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Sorry about that. So as you can see, these shoes, they have a lot of detail. There's even shoelaces, there's a lot of material kind of folds on the side. Um, she even has this little kind of red layer at the bottom. And then on the sole, again, it has that kind of opposite imprint to the stand that we have down the bottom. And then there's a hole there and one sticking out so that we can put both bits into the stand. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Now let's get this figure into her stand where she belongs. And here we go, here she is in her stand. What a wonderful looking figure, and I'm really impressed with the quality of this. She costs about 2,000 yen to win. I'm not too sure how much she is in the shops at the moment, but definitely worth picking up. 
And again, after I show you some nice pretty shots, I will give you a quick look at them together side by side from last year and of course this year. But anyway, let's take a nice look at this figure. Let's take a look. because I just couldn't stop talking about it. Let's take a look at these two figures side by side. Okay, and let's go find your new home on the shelf. Let's go for a walk. So yeah, this is an absolutely stunning figure. I'm really, really impressed with this one. Now, usually we would put our figures over here, but today she has a special place to go, which is on the Miku shelf. Um, we haven't actually put any figures up here for a little while, but I think she goes perfectly next to last year's Miku. But there you have it, that is this year's Hatsune Miku title version 2 figure. Absolutely stunning, lovely addition to the collection next to last year's figure. So, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like. Uh, please also subscribe for more videos. And I look forward to seeing you in another video coming soon. Okay, bye!